Hi everyone, this is Maha Belli from the American University in Cairo, and with me is Mia. <laughs> yeah. And we're going to have a few other people joining us in a few minutes. Um, but what we're doing right now is an activity that I learned from Stephen Covey's book, First Things First. And the book is, um, is about setting, like, sort, not just time management, but life management. Mm -hmm. And the key activity starts like this. You start by imagining your life. It's an individual activity, individual reflection, really. Uh, you start with imagining your life and your 80th birthday or your funeral and what people, if everyone around you who's lived your life with you is there and able to talk about how you lived your life, what would you want them to be saying? And mm -hmm. with undergraduate students, I prefer to use the 80th birthday. I don't want to talk about funerals, but I think with adults, funerals would be really, really impactful as well. Mm -hmm. And the way the way he divides all this thinking, so it's it's called live, love, learn, and leave a legacy. And so you think about your life and how did you live you know, when you're 80? How do you want to be remembered for having living your life? What kind of relationships and love did you have in your social life? What did you learn? And what kind of legacy did you leave behind? Um, and when you think about all of these four things, then you use these to help you write your mission in life. And so the the idea of it is thinking about living and what your physical health what you're eating and what you, how you're taking care of your body um and your health in general and then the loving what kind of relationships do you prioritize and the learning what do you want to be learning throughout your life and the leave a legacy i was saying um in islam uh, there are three broad ways you can leave a legacy one of them is with your children after you die your children are your legacy or through charitable donations and things like that, that keep benefiting people after you die and mm -hmm. through knowledge that you give others, uh, for example, a book you've written or a student you've taught who, who stays on behind, even though you're gone. Um, and there could be other legacies, of course, but these are the three that immediately come to me because of uh, my culture. Um, mm -hmm. Mia, do you like, have you ever done anything like this? And and for me, this, this setting my mission in life then becomes the foundation of how I make decisions about my life afterwards like do I take this job or that job do I marry this person or that person mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, if I have a choice between two big things and how do I make that decision I think when I didn't have my mission in life in front of me and in moments where I forget it I yeah. think I sometimes make the wrong decision yeah I really like the link between the reflection process through these lenses and then the intentionality moving forward. This exercise really helps with that. So when you circle back and think about these four categories, you know, how have I lived? How do I want to live? How have I loved? How do I want to love? Um, and then connecting that up with the idea of learning and legacy, it really expands upon your values, right? Um, a comment about Stephen Covey is just simply that first things first. Um, I have read that recently, Maha, but I, I don't know if I have the same version. I have a small little book of it. I don't know if it, it, it might've version. been changed in some way, the little book that I have. I wish mm -hmm. I had it in my bag because I would actually show it, but they have taken one sentence from some of the ideas in it and put it on page by page. So it's a meditation um, reflection each day. And it's a little bit of a prompt from this idea, which is encapsulated in this exercise. So it's really a nice thing to do is to move into the day with a bit of the prompt from this general concept. Um, yeah, I so think the other is, one is a full length big book. Yeah, so I have yeah, this but I like that they've book. done that. Yeah, they turned it into a small handbook and it's yeah. like literally one sentence that you can contemplate yeah. as yeah. you move into your day. You know, can I tell you something that or if, because you said that you reminded me of a particular thing that I took out of that book that benefited me 20 years later, or almost 20 years later, is he talks about early motherhood and the work-life mm -hmm. balance type of thing. And yeah. he talks about how you don't always need to be in equilibrium or, or your equilibrium isn't always the same balance. And so yeah. when you have a young child, you are the only, a lot of times, the main person that that child relies on. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it's not the time to worry about what's happening with your career or with anything else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's okay. And that was really important to me. Like I took, it's possible in Egypt to take a lot of years of maternity leave. So I took almost my two full years of maternity leave 
um, the first year I totally focused on just my child. And the second year I finished my PhD a thesis while taking care of my child and not going back to work. Mm-hmm. Um, and that feeling okay about that. Because a lot of yes, times you have the gave FOMO. You the of, oh my God, with, yes. to, to be okay with yeah. um, that you can do everything, but not at the same time. Yeah. kind of like yeah, wisdom, not necessarily right? exactly yeah. yeah or maybe there's a time for this and there's a time for that and that's okay you know there's a lot of um nuggets of um life wisdom that go into the work i mean meaning stephen covey's first things first but the live love learn leave a legacy paradigm i think really helps in being clear about what your intentions are for your life as you said like a mission statement and then you can literally use it like a litmus test to the decisions you're in in the moment when you feel confused. It yeah. helps like clarify the compass of your heart and your values and your soul, right? Um, yeah. And we all, you know, do these, we all configure what we want in our lives differently. And that's all good. But to have the clarity around it is what's powerful. Yeah. You, you made me, you inspired me for something because originally I was, I used it with my students just to help them start thinking about this and then they can do whatever with it. But I think it yeah. would be useful in the middle of the semester to come back and say, using it as a litmus test, think yeah. about a major life decision looming and yeah. that you're willing to share. Obviously, a lot of this won't be shareable, I think. But, yeah. um, and I didn't ask students to share back. I asked them to just do it. And they think they just enjoyed the process of thinking about it. But I yeah. think we could ask, is there a decision in your life that you're now able to take with more clarity because you have, you know, sort of divided all of these things up and, and, and put them together. And um, we all get to fun. these points in our lives, you know, sometimes rather often, you know, where we literally feel confused about what is the right next move. And when you, I think when we are in that place, it's better to step back and be reflective. And this kind of paradigm helps us see ourselves, our true selves, so that we can navigate those confusing times. I need to do this exercise again, actually. <laughs> yeah, I think I do too. And that's what's cool about it is like, you know, it's never it's, it's never stale. It's never already done or yeah. because life itself is a growth. It's like a journey and a growth process yeah. on ever evolving. So it applies always this Definitely. taking account, taking stock Definitely. and then yeah. applying it again to yeah. like the forks in the road of life. Yeah. Especially with big um, life decisions, like yeah. ch- having children or children yeah. growing or elderly parents yeah. and and yeah. Yep. So I'm going to I'm going to pause the recording until a few other people are done with uh, doing the exercise and Great. I'll call them back and we'll continue the recording. Oh no. All right. So <laughs> Alan, Cheryl and Shaina have um, had some time to sort of think through this exercise. Just 10 minutes. I think if with undergraduates you could give them more time, but with adults, you know, we think so fast. <laughs> but obviously these are just preliminary reflections and So I'd love to hear what thoughts you have on this exercise, if there's anything that either popped out for you or if you have thoughts on how this could be used in a classroom context. Well, we talked about um, a little bit about sort of storytelling in terms of, uh, Alan said it nicely, something about, as long as someone who is still living remembers you, you you have a, a legacy still after you're gone, mm-hmm. which was really lovely, and I I was had been thinking along those lines those lines as well, where um, our stories sort of ripple out and interact with other people's stories, and they keep going and they keep going. Mm-hmm. So we thought about that a little bit, but I'll let somebody else speak also about what we talked about. Yeah, I, I think that is a, a Mexico. I, I remember someone who had gone who talked about experience with their family in Mexico who had this regular ritual of having the mural of family pictures on the wall. And like they didn't watch TV, they would stand around and they would say, you know, remember the time so and so did this. And the idea that, you know, our body dies, but the real death is when no one doesn't tell our stories anymore. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. And so, um, 
I know I think sometimes we get a lot of like having the legacy because we want to have like this it's not the desire to have this legacy to be a monument or to be important um and so um I I kind of turn around to think about like who are the people who left legacies for me and so mm -hmm. and what has that meant um and sort of that could be a driving thing and then we had a little bit of discussion about like can you really del deliberately and say this is the legacy I want and then act on that or does it kind of emerge constantly because we go through so That's many changes point. and um I know Cheryl talked about like the fatigue of, of like having so many demands um throughout her busy work day um that you know now it seems like there's not time to like or, or space um to, to even be thinking about this because we're just trying to like maintain um and so and that's why she was appreciative for for this opportunity because she can say to her coworkers, i'm in pd right now but she's <laughs> well there, which is important and so i know we got distracted because cheryl and i know each other and we haven't chatted in a long time okay <laughs> This, um, so what you just said there sort of about the legacy emerging is really interesting because um, yeah. I, I was just thinking now when I initially did this exercise so many years ago, and I was thinking about how part of my mission in life was to continue learning and to teach others what I've learned along the way. At the time, I was just thinking about teaching, like just mm -hmm. teaching with my mm -hmm. students. And I wasn't even an academic developer at the time where I'm teaching teachers. And I wasn't writing. And then I realized uh, that writing became really central to that and yeah. blogging especially. But then this is why I go crazy with the idea of my domain is going to disappear when I die. <laughs> and that really annoys me. And that keeps me up at night a little bit, actually. Um, and not because whatever, you know, but it's just a thing that I did that I left to the world that I'd yeah. like to keep. I don't know if it's going to be useful in 10 years time or whatever, but. It's one of but the I, I thought there's something about artifacts, whether they are tangible yeah. objects, um, but like there's, there's also personal artifacts, but I, I'm with you, Mahai, you know, like I, it's not like I want to be, again, remembered as, as important, but just because it was, um, it, it feels like it, it's somewhat like if people want to know who I am and what I did and who was important to me and mm -hmm. um, even the things I did wrong, like there it is, like, you know, whether it's in your writings um and so you know to have to have that i think is is really important um and let others figure out what the legacy really is um mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. carol you said something in the chat about how you might use this with students which i think would be useful for others watching the video sure i i just said i think you could use this exercise in the classroom with students to help them begin to learn or think about how to um, have balance of study, career, family, and enjoying life. So true. And I think that this is desperately needed now. I think that there's a heightened sensitivity around um, finding meaning in life, finding balance in life, and struggling tremendously. But also the hope is in the being able to admit that in a way that I don't feel was as much the case some years back. So I think there's an opening is what I'm trying to say, even though there's also some um, serious pain that's bring, being brought forth uh, due to failing systems and, um, you know, yeah. Yeah, just I, I, Actually, failing systems thinking, is too broad, but. Thinking about this yeah. and, and um, thinking about COVID, and remember when I used yeah. to say, uh, staying away from elderly family to protect their health, but mm -hmm. they could die from depression and from loneliness. Yeah. And that yeah. You're, you're prioritizing the live over the love sometimes to do things. Mm -hmm. And maybe, maybe there was something wrong with that or mm -hmm. figuring out how do you do the love differently because of the COVID context mm -hmm. was important. And then now that things are changing, what do you need to change again? Yeah, uh, in that context. Shahinez, I, I want to ask you because you teach environmental, right? Environment type courses and chemistry. And would I know this is a difficult question to ask. Is there any way that you could use something like this in your own classes? It's a little bit difficult to use such a thing in these mm. classes. But usually I try to not to be uh, that. that of course, they have to take whatever I should give them, but 
also I try to be uh, open to other things. It is not just like this. Uh, whenever I find an opportunity, I go through it. Mm. But it is a little bit uh, yeah. difficult. My thinking is they could do this exercise with an environmental theme yeah. in mind. How yeah. would you live your life differently to not harm the environment or to yeah. protect the environment? Yeah. But, but nowadays we are talking, we know that uh, the new course which I have developed for uh, Egypt water crisis, it mm. is like this. We are talking about the water now. Yeah. <laughs> right. And how could we live without it or water? Yeah. How, what is the harm is coming to us and how to yeah. not to be harmed? Yeah, yeah yeah that's great and, have, and, and and they have also to care about the farmers they have to care exactly. about so yeah. many yeah people, people they, they don't normally care about people not in their immediate one of the other things Stephen Covey talks about is your circle of influence and your circle of control mm -hmm. you can control your own life maybe you're within your nuclear family but you may have a circle of influence outside of that and then there's I think a circle of something else that you're interested in, but you can't do anything about it but the circle of influence is a really interesting thing is you can't control it but maybe you have uh power in and some way to be heard like you're a journalist and you can write about it or you're you're the manager of something and you can talk to others so i'm gonna i'm gonna close the breakout rooms and close the recording thank you all so much for for this recording